Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to start our session. The theme is from women's writing to self-affirmation. If you need any English interpreting, you can ask for the simultaneous interpreting device at the front door. Women's writing to self-affirmation. If you need Chinese English uh, interpreting services, please, uh, our uh, festival will provide the, uh, uh, the, the devices for you. Uh, I think our talk this afternoon will be uh, mainly in Mandarin Chinese, and we also have speaker will use English as well. So in, in other words, whatever language that is most comfortable to you. 那今天我们的这个环节呢，就是女性作家到自我肯定呢，我们主要是用呃，我我 conduct mainly in Mandarin with occasional speech in English. Feel free to pick up an interpreting device if you need. I am the moderator of this session. I'm Julia Zhu. I was already here in the last session. Now, without much further ado, I would like to introduce our panelists. From the farthest end is Su Manning. She's an independent writer and creator. She co-authored in many literary genres, and she has published this collection of short stories called A Street Car Called Desire. She also writes essays, commentaries, poems, and short stories. She's going to publish her first collection of poems called the Edge of Fire. Feel free to add if my introduction of you is not complete. Next, we have Meng Yu. Li Wenli. She is a domestic worker, but she really loves painting. She's bringing some of her paintings here. She is a member of the Pichun Literary Collective and Hong Yan Zhijia. She published The World of Meng Yu in 2023. Her illustrations have been featured in the various magazines and platforms. And then we have Sonia Leung, called Liang Fangling, a very beautiful name. I chatted with Sonia right before her arrival. I was speaking English. She's a Hong Kong based poet and writer. She has won awards for both her prose and poetry, including World View 2023 a UK-based annual global poetry competition, and Hong Kong's Top Story 2015 and 2016. Her work has appeared in literary journals and anthologies worldwide. Sonia debuted Don't Cry, Phoenix, Thank you. Our bilingual Chinese English poetry collection with a CD of 10 original songs in Taiwan in 2020. And I know that those songs are composed by your friends. Yes. Uh, that's, I, I look forward to it. Her second book, The Girl Who Dreamed, a Hong Kong memoir of triumph against the odds, is available now in Hong Kong and Macau bookshops and for pre-order in the US, Canada, and the UK. So just wanted to, to show how I look forward to Sonia. I have two copies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Sonia, it's great uh, pleasure to have you here with us today. 
，最跟我靠近的是我们本地的一位作家，呃，舅舅汪。Uh, and next, right next to me is a local writer called Jojo Wang. Jojo Wang is the vice president of the Macau Poetry Society, and she also established her own creative industry company. She has won five times at the Macau Literary Prize. She also writes essays. And column articles for the Macau Daily News. Some of her works have been selected at the 2016 Macau Literary Works. She has also published two collections of poetry. Again, welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, To our all four guests. 那我我想呃问问在座的作家有没有想补充一点的？刚才在这个。Do you have anything you want to add in it? 最近几年几位作家的这个作品的当中有没有什么可以 ？Have I missed any of your notable works? Any updates? 啊，有没有？都好，都还好啊。谢谢，谢谢陆老师。Thank you. 开始我们的交流。Then I'll start our Dialogue. I think we can be casual.、Uh, feel free to talk about anything you want. We are an all-female panel here, and we will focus on women's writing. Maybe I'll ask first. In your creation. What do you think is the biggest challenge? So, so、uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say that in English as well. I, I think with、uh, women's writing, most of the time you also came across unimaginable difficulties and challenges. I wonder if you would like to share some of them with our audiences. I think many of us being accused of being confessional. Like whenever we write about a bit deeply about ourselves, then it's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, oh, you know, we don't want to know your laundry list or whatever, you know.、Uh, so I think it's very easy for the world to just kick us aside and say, "Wow,、well, those are maybe your personal issue, you know." Women just emotional, you know. So whenever we deal with issues like that, we always being accused of being nuts, you know, <laughs> crazy, you know, not taken seriously. So,、um, so maybe I just mentioned here that it took me ten years to write my book and get it published. So that's how hard it is for us. I, I think probably in general, also it may, I mean that's、uh, the case in Hong Kong anyway. That、um, we feel that because you, when you don't see yourself in the books you read, then you just don't feel you are worthy to write, right? So that that's the main problem, I think. So we need female, you know, writers like us to put out more books and just keep on knocking on the publisher's door and just remind them we are here and we matters. We matter.、Yeah. Thank you, Sonia. That was beautifully put. Uh, uh, so I just want to summarize that in in, in Chinese, in a way. Why? 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 A similar dismissive attitude regarding regarding your works. So I actually I quite agree with your ideas. Is because I also spent almost ten years to publish one book.、Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I quite understand your your feeling. Yeah. Because because I myself also, especially the book, is not just one year or two years can come out. It's been printed for a long time. It takes me almost ten years. To write, to publish my first collection of poems, I started to write about it at 16, and I published it at 
I am a poet, a wife, a mother, or a manager in my office. I'm also a daughter-in-law, a daughter. I have six roles all in me. To a creator, it's really difficult. You can't just do whatever you like. It takes six times the effort for you to do the same as a man. Women's writing has everything to do with self-affirmation. I didn't write anything before Pichun Literary Collective. I came from the rural area of China. Then I went to Beijing to be a domestic helper. Pichun Literary Collective is a group made up of all the migrant workers like me. I echo what you said before. We have so many roles. The Pichun Collective inspired me and encouraged me to write down what I feel in my life. I am a daughter, a mother, a wife. I'm also a domestic helper. I mainly write nine fiction. When I write these things down, I feel quite hesitant. What will my employers, my parents, my family see me when they see this? But if I don't write about it, I feel suppressed. This is my first time in Macau. It's really eye-opening. I think literature helps me break away from my small circle and enter a bigger world. I think myself is so fortunate. I have I write about my struggles with my husband, my stories with my sisters, and also with my employers. I think if they read about what I write about them, they might not be happy. That's my confusion. I agree with what you said. Women have multiple roles. I want to go back to the biggest challenge. I think it's time. I think time has become a barrier for women's writing because we're too loving. Firstly, the second is we're too responsible. When you are a wife, a daughter, a mother, out of love and responsibility, you spend a lot of time on these roles. And no, not much time is left for writing. You only have fragments of time. I think for me, that's the biggest hurdle. Love and sense of responsibility. Thank you, uh, Miss So. Just now, Jojo and Sonia all talked about the extremely long time for them to publish their book, especially for Sonia's memoir. It takes them 10 years. For Meng Yu and Man Ling, they talk about the scarcity of time. Because we have so many different roles, it's hard to squeeze time for writing. Virginia Woolf writes the room, a room worth one's own. So I want to bring the concept of space to our discussion. Do you think 
um, in addition to the scarcity of time, space is also a challenge. Like, where do you write your books? Anyone who can understand your ambitions in writing? A good question. A good concept. Just now, I was chatting with Manning about Wolf. I said, I'm going to talk about Virginia Woolf because she's such a big influence in my writing. I started to read her books at 16. It takes two things for a woman to start writing, five, uh, 500 pounds a year and a room of her own. You have to be independent financially and psychologically or spatially in order to become a writer. That has become my goal ever since I was 16. I love writing poems, but I'm not a professional poet because it's too difficult. I have I'm, uh, my full-time job is in a gaming enterprise. That's my way of ensuring that financial independence. And for the space, a room of one's own, it actually refers to your space of creation, of creativity. It's really difficult for you to break away from all your duties and to immerse yourself in your writing. I think it's more like a psychological state. So Wolf's concept of the two prerequisites for writing, it takes me 20 years to fulfill that two prerequisites. I'm very proud of myself, and I want to share the joy with you. So I just had my Hong Kong uh, book launch uh, during the Hong Kong Literary Festival, and uh, I was also asked uh, this question that, uh, so why there are not more girls, you know, like books about Chinese girls like yours? So, and I, yeah, I also quote Virginia Woolf. <laughs> Yeah, a room of one's own, right? Because uh, so after also like you, I work hard <laughs> for uh, 20 years and then uh, saved. And uh, I allow myself to join a uh, M MFA in creative writing. Yeah, at that time in uh, CTU, um, now defunct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I joined. And so that's that. 2014, that was when I started to write uh, my book. Um, and the entry, uh, uh, entry level, I mean, for the application, uh, the first 20 pages I wrote uh, was the example, the uh, writing example that I submit for my program. And when I finished, two years later, I got 80 pages, which is my creative thesis. So yeah, so the program helped me to build the foundation of this book. And it, um, it gave me that confidence that I have a, uh, my story is worth telling. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, and they usually use uh, powerful and beautiful and kind of this kind of words that really, that, and these are, they are um, my mentors. They are like well published New York uh, or uh, London you know, uh, based writers. So you can kind of get the feeling that you have a worldwide world. Uh, Roddy and like you guys here today, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it, it, yeah. So, but it's it, apart from really difficult to get in. It's very expensive as well. It's as expensive as EMBA. <laughs> yeah. So people will say, "Well, you're crazy. You know, you work in a corporate world, and then but you know, you do an MFA. What for? You know." So I, yeah, I I couldn't tell people that I'm doing my MFA. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, and then, uh, so 10 years later today, I got it published, but there's no guarantee, right? So no matter how much effort you put into it, so really it, you know, and like 
like all you guys were saying, like we really work alone, right? Yeah. So and you know, you really have to be really determined to make it uh, successful or to, to, to have a book out. And yeah, so it and also I uh, apart from writing this memoir because it's about my journey from mainland China to Hong Kong, and I went away from home when I was 15 to Taiwan. So um, some, uh, yeah. So I went through some difficulties, and uh, so so uh, sometimes when it gets really hard to write very descriptive passages, then I wrote. I I turned to poetry. Yeah. So I actually wrote both the memoir and the poetry uh, together. So they are my, they are my sisters uh, that join force to keep me going. Yeah, so that's how I, yeah, arrive here. <laughs> 可不可以, uh, 可不可以请孟宇老师, uh, 刚才呢, uh, Sonia呢, 她讲到了这个, uh, I'll just briefly recap Sonia and Jojo's point to Mengyu. Uh, how can you gain financial independence and then pursue your dreams? I want to ask if Meng Yu uh, feels the same. Do you ever worry about your um, incomes? When I was in the countryside, I had no financial independence. I had no time of my own. After I came to Beijing and joined the Pichun Literary Collective and also Hong Yan Zhijian, both groups are made up of migrant workers. There we had our own interest groups. We learned to dance, we learned to write songs, and recorded our performances. We also staged dramas. In, it's in Beijing that I got to discover more of myself. I didn't want to be famous or anything like that. I wanted to learn. And people encouraged me to paint and write what I want to express. I used to think that I was the most miserable person in the world. But ever since I started to write and paint, I think I'm the happiest person in the world. I'm 56 years old now, and I feel extremely privileged to have my time to write and paint. I feel I'm always in a hurry to express everything I have with such a limited time. I feel I'm finally living my life. Through writing and painting, I think my life is so much more colorful. I don't have time to be negative. I just spent every minute learning and painting and writing. Of course, my book is far from perfect. I'm still proud of myself. I think my self-confidence has been enhanced through, uh, by writing and painting. It has transformed me. Thank you. I think I'm uh, the conclusion part. I really like what you said. My next book, if I'm going to publish a new book, I want to invite Sonia Liang. I think she's really good at presenting her book. Because after I finish a book, I, want, I tend to forget about it. I just give my books away to my friends. 
I don't ask people to buy my books. I think I have to work harder at promoting myself. Otherwise, I will never earn my fifty uh, five hundred pounds. Uh, back to Virginia Woolf. For me, I want to talk about another writer, Simona de Beauvoir. She said, well, do you know what I'm going to quote? One is not born, but rather become, uh, becomes a woman. But rather becomes a woman. I really echo her statement, because when we were little, when we were in kindergarten, we had no idea of the differences of gender. After we hit puberty, the notion of gender came up. Nowadays, parents might be a bit more sensitive. But back in my days, I'm not going to reveal my age, but back in my days, we were very slow uh, in differentiating genders. I think the notion of gender is a formation of society. It's not born. We were told to be a girl and then a woman. Just like we were told, this is a table, this is a bottle of water. My mother and father actually raised me as a boy because they have this major preference on boys, <laughs> not meaning to be disrespectful. I grew up feeling that I have to be better than boys. I grew up among boys. I played with them. I didn't grow long hair quite different from what I look like right now. I know what boys think, and I don't see myself as a girl or a woman. I only got to know the gender differences later. Hong Kong has been a was under British rule for a long time. And Hong Kong girls tend to, well, just my personal opinion, they tend to downplay their feminine side. That's probably a regional difference. Am I taking up too much time? No, uh, feel free to <laughs> say anything you like. Uh, I didn't bring my book today. This is my biggest discovery, because I'm the only one without a book in front of me. It's probably an indicator that I should start writing another book. Then, um, when we say that we have to have money and time uh, and space to start writing, is it really the case? Do we have to have enough money and space? I think not necessarily. For me, I write in every fragment of time on the metro or in the bathroom. I write down things that occur to me whenever I feel like doing so. You can write on the move 
It's not like you need to have your own study, to have your home office, put on some music, and then a cat by your side. Of course, I'm depict, I'm、uh, picturing my、uh, ideal scenario, but it's not necessarily、um, this. You can start writing anytime, anywhere. In the ancient times or、um, in the older days, writers write great works without money or without a proper place to live. <coughs> Now we are more comfortable in terms of living, but there are not that many great works. As in the old times, that's my observation. Thank you. Thank you, Manling. I think you summarized and also inspired my next question. Version, because、uh, I do think all the speakers mentioned the difficulties of getting publications of their work,、um, and, and then I,、uh, I I also had the feeling that. We, as we, for speakers, doing their、um, writing, they actually have to absorb inspirations from writers such as Virginia Woolf and also Simone Bova, I, I think.、Um, and then I think among uh, uh, four, four of our speakers, Sonia and uh, uh, Meng Yu 老师 I think. Both of them, you actually changed spaces, which because I I I I did get that from Sonia said you 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 went you left Hong Kong for Taiwan and then you 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 went to、uh, the States to to do your MFA and Meng Yu 老师呃呃从这个农村来到了这个呃北京啊 so I, I now I'm actually talking about、uh, the physical travel.、Uh, Because in in your in your books,、uh, I think you, no matter it's poetry or or novel,、uh, you did you did absorb all those inspirations, and I I, I do remember from Sonia's book, you 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 have some favorite writer, and, and that one is Cao Xueqing,、uh, and then you have some poets as,、uh, quoted as well. So my my next question is, how much do you think that、uh, through our reading of classics of Chinese as well as Western Classics that inspire you to go on with this. Ah, 就是说这个中外的一些名著呢，对我们作为一个呃女性作家，她到底的有一些呃怎么样的影响啊？谢谢。呃，要我不要用不用曼林老师总结吧。呃，孟宇老师可不可以先开始讲讲自己的经历 ？I'll start with 孟宇。You left your hometown to work in Beijing, and then your encounter of this literary、uh, collective really nourished you. Do you think this physical、um, relocation influenced your creation? When I was in schools, I loved reading. But I think, at that time, writers were a distant notion. I was not well educated, and never in one day had I thought that my work would appear in paper. In Pichun, there is a person called Fan Yusu, who is also a domestic helper, and she published her writing. And it became a really hit article in China, and I was inspired by her success to write my own stories. That's why I participated in the Pichun Literary Collective. I learned from everybody. I was a nanny, a domestic helper. I felt inferior to my employers and their children. But after I Learned to write and paint. I felt that my work has its own value. I learned to reflect on my life through writing. Because of writing, 
I was saved. <laughs> I don't know how to put it in words. I work 24 hours in my employer's home. I only have my spare time after the kids fall asleep at 12 at midnight. When I first left my hometown, I felt I was like a falling leaf, a dust in this huge metropolis of Beijing. I was so scared. But the literary collective gave me warmth. I felt I had somewhere to go. It's a source of light in my life. I am a completely different person than before. I am kind of the most active member in the two groups. I am the MC, the dancer, the painter, and the writer. I think moving to Beijing means rebirth to me. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so before um, men Julia mentioned about uh, the book that changed my life is the uh, dream of the wet chamber. Yeah, so it's a lot of uh, it's prose plus poetry, and so that's that's how also I wrote my book. And so I use um, so many people maybe like yeah Julia will mention I like, uh, it's quite poetic um, passages. So um, so I use poetic uh, devices. Um, like the poetic diction, like sounds, meanings, and rhythms um, to construct the language, uh, my operation uh, system, by using alliteration and uh, simile, personification, allusion, metaphor, I establish the feeling and atmosphere of my pose. And, and also I use uh, show, don't tell, because uh, the 15-year-old me uh, was pretty badly damaged, so uh, she couldn't tell then, and so now the uh, mature writer me try to show, uh, uh, it, yeah, to show and, and let people know how she f felt then. So if I may, I will read a little passage, an excerpt from my book, and then maybe you can get a feeling of it. So, uh, <laughs> one one eight. Yeah, yeah, one one eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the chapter is called "The Moon in a Dog's Eye." Yeah. Got it. Yeah. 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 The summer of nineteen ninety came, closing the first year of my secondary school life. The once skylit room in my heart had disappeared. The hopeful, hardworking me felt like night years away. Instead, a cold, a dark cold cell captured my thoughts and feelings. I couldn't reach out. I couldn't cry. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't dream anymore. One night in the wee hours. I gazed at the moonlight that slid gracefully through the rusty iron gate of our heart. Her gentle light transformed the entrance and the steps beyond it, giving them a magical glow. The moon's sense of serenity allured me. It generated and urged me to join her in the peaceful world out there beneath, the, beneath its gleam. The rest of my family was sound asleep. Creeping down from my upper bunk bed, I quietly unlocked the gate and walked away. My flip flops were stardust, carrying me away from our home. Weaving through the narrow winding paths of our slum, I hurried toward a nearby construction site at Tesclane Tunnel in Diamond Hill. I need space, a quiet place where I could hear my breath. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank you. 
So I just want to react a little bit um, about the. Th uh, yeah, I should say that um, I think it is easy to write. You can write everywhere, but to write something that reflective and very deep that you can actually bring people into your scene and be there with you. It takes time and a lot of effort to polish, and you do need your space to do so. So it's not like you can just write in the MTL and then you know put it out there like Twitter or whatever. You know, it's it depends really what you want to write. And I think quality is very important. That's why it took me ten years. It took me ten years to polish it and get it here. Yeah. I want to respond to that. I said I talked about writing, not publishing. So that's probably uh, the difference. Yes, we can write whenever and wherever we can. But Sonia said it really well. If you want to go deep in your writing, you need a space. So a room of one's own is important. In the end, Meng Yu talked about her experience, and it's really touching. How come I don't have um, this kind of experience? I'm an architect for interior design. In my time, is quite fragmentized. I develop an interest in writing because of the influence of my family. I li lived in Macau for a period of time, and then in Hong Kong. This uh, probably will go into my memoir. I will not talk about it right now. I think for me, Writing is a form of self-healing and self-discovery, as well as self-reflection and reflection on society. I grew up among the boys, and I was really touched by Sonia's um, beautiful depiction in her book. It's quite different from my writing style. It's quite masculine. I ask myself, how do I define my gender when I write? For any writer, male or female, I think the definition of gender matters. Many male writers write love romance under a feminine pen name. So I assume they are taking the perspective of a woman. What about my perspective when I'm writing? I think it's neutral. My words are neither feminine nor uh, masculine. I focus more on the debate between myself. Perhaps because of my constellation, because I am a Gemini. Back to the topic. Uh, how come we don't discuss men's writing? When I received the invitation, invitation and saw this topic, I said, is it too simple a label? We're in the 21st century and we're still talking about this. But if you think about it, it's still worth debating and discussing. Why? Because the world we see and we live in is just a small portion 
of the entire world. There are so many different communities out there that we know nothing about. We have to broaden our horizons um, through writing. We want to shed a light on other people's lives. Don't let them be forgotten. Of course, the world has too many injustices and too many problems. And women's rights are just one of them. We also have wars, ongoing wars. If you think about it, it's quite... Uh, I, I think I've digressed from the topic a bit. Women have been suppressed for a long time. In ancient times, we had the matriarchal society. But then women became dismissed as just a rib from men. Why patriarchy took over? I think the root cause is war. Wars contributed to the rise of patriarchy. Because women have to give birth to babies and raise them while men were at war. And after wars, they began to take up the role of the matriarch. That's why women were then suppressed. If we view human civilization, I think we need to revisit history and let more women voice their opinions. Thank you. Manling, I really agree with Manling. Currently, I work in a gaming enterprise. I'm the manager level, and I have to make decisions. I'm, uh, I'm mainly deal with data mining and big data. If you are smart enough, and if you are visionary enough, you can um, be promoted. There's no clear distinction or discrimination against women. This talk made me think twice about the gender discrimination. I'm also an immigrant here. I moved from Fujian to Macau. Uh, so I also identify with your question of philosoph uh, physical movement. I had many childhood traumas that I only began to deal with after I came to Macau. My questions and confusions about gender also happened in this period. At 16, I began to read a lot of literature because I was so lonely. I felt homesick when I uh, walk, walked in Macau and could see Zhuhai on the other side. I felt homesick and nostalgic. I read a lot of ancient Chinese literature and also Western classics. Then I started to write my own pieces. And in my writing, I gradually 
completely established my feminine identity. I was a kid dying to be independent because I didn't come here on my own. My parents brought me here. I had this strong urge to be independent. That's why Virginia Woolf had such a big impact on me. I want to take control of my own life, and writing was my first step. I began to do data analysis because I wanted to have financial independence. At workplace, I think it's more merit-based. I think um, Macau is quite inclusive. I think we should give the city this credit. It's probably the advantage of a capitalist society. Whoever able will get the recognition. There are equal opportunities in Macau. That's probably the reason why many, uh, not many people talk about gender discrimination in Macau. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sonia. This is what I, 16 years old, I, not I, I went into the club. When I was in the casino, I walked from the casino floor and I saw the dealer. She is stealing the car and face a lot of customers, but there is no any dream for her. Mm -hmm. Then I write the points for the dealer. Ah, uh, uh, actually, I wrote it as Zhuang He, but I gave her a very beautiful name, a beautiful name. Yeah, Mo Su Si. This I want to check the English name. Mo Su Si. Mo Su Si is what in English? Oh, magician. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Magician. Yeah. Magician. Yeah. This poem won the Macau Literary Prize. I want to share with you just one part of it. I seem to be thinking, I seem precise, but I'm just used to the worthless fortune and watching cards dance in my hands. Bai 而你输不起，我的双手在牌上，牌在我的双手上。我想离开，我要离开，可右手轻轻推出牌，就像推开了世界。这是我当时我刚才略略的读了一下。It's just a part of my poem about the dealer, entitled Magician. Uh, Meng Yu has also brought her works here. Can you share an excerpt with us? Well, while you um, try to find the right excerpt, I want to ask Manning, do you want to share anything with us? First, I want to ask how long did it take um, for you to write this book? Uh, I wrote most of these in fragmented time, sometimes when I was, I'm sleepless and sometimes when I was on the metro. Have you found it? Yes. Because I am a domestic helper and I have many um, people in the same profession. I'm really fortunate because most of, uh, many of my employers, they are really nice. They give me their clothes and other things. 
，写在我们文学小组，每次老师都会写发表了，都会给我们送书。就是每年过年回家的时候，我心里想里抓的最多的都是书，都是我得来的。我准备把这些书攒起来，因为我现在没有时间，等我老了以后哪都去不了了，我就坐着看书。那我就读一首。你只是一个家政工。I will share a poem. You are just a domestic worker. 你却已挥动扫把、拖布，为这美丽的大城市洗漱、装扮，迎接崭新的一天。当你背着行囊，背井离乡，来到这里，用一双粗糙的手和一颗赤诚的心。接过心神的婴儿、年迈的老人和繁琐的家务事，你便接过了一封沉甸甸的责任心。远方有你的家，你却只能在梦里见到它。你把这里当成家，却没有感受到家的温暖。你把这里的人当亲人对待，而你的亲人却留守在老家。炎炎夏日苦树里。你挥汗如雨，步履不停，菜市场、医院里、地铁口，到处都是你匆忙的身影。每个稚嫩的笑脸后面，都是你小心翼翼的付出。每个康复老人的身后，都有着你耐心细致的呵护。每个整洁舒适房子的角落里，都有着你辛勤的汗滴。你用一双粗糙的手。With your rough hands, you maintain two families. With a pair of feet, you measure the city and the village. You take care of others, but who cares about you? Thank you. 嗯，苏老师有没有要补充，或者 ？Do you want to add anything, Manlin? 补充一下，对吧 ？Okay, please go on. Not to make a summary or anything. Conclusion. 啊，我再说一下，就是女性写作和自我肯定。I want to go back to women's writing and self-affirmation. 过程当中。In the writing process. 你在和你的灵魂说话。The writer is talking to their soul very deep. Your feelings, your experiences, and your memories are all interwoven into your words. Like Meng Yu's book, or Sonia and Jojo's books. Every book is like a baby. After you gave birth to a baby, do you feel good? Do you feel all the physical pain is gone? No? No? <laughs> Why not? I'll be very quick. Oh. 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 And I feel really good after writing it down. Female artists, writers, painters, or sculptors. They still need to make their voices louder because of. Under exposure. I think it's probably because the majority of women don't have strong ambitions and the eagerness for power. If 
A man wants to be a writer or an artist. He has to shoulder the responsibility of re- raising a family. He fights really hard to make a fame. And they can see a lot of successful precedents in the market. They will be very competitive. But for women, I think we are not like that. We are probably more peaceful. We don't. Ha- we are not that ambitious. It's not that we're not positive. It's because we're not aggressive enough. I don't know if you agree with me on this. It's my personal feeling. Okay, we're running out of time. I write to fulfill myself. It's a form of self-fulfillment, but for men, it's probably different. I'll just stop here. Um, I wanted to hear Sonia's response to, to this um, you know, aftermath of writing yeah. the finish, writing the book. <laughs> Oh, very quickly. <laughs> oh, oh, um, because uh, when you process deep trauma, and you need to immerse yourself in the scenes, so it will uh, you will feel we traumatized. So be very careful. It's, I think it, it's great for her to have that kind of release and cathartic, but not not for everyone. Yeah, so um, that, that's because um, in a book, at this kind of uh, full book length level, you need to have a horizontal port line and a vertical port line. The horizontal port line is uh, this happened, this happened, this happened. So you follow the timeline, but then the vertical port line is that you really have to delve deep into your psyche. And you need to, we, uh, we like, Take out all the dirt inside yourself and be able to face it, and that takes a lot of courage and takes a lot of um, your emotional health. So you need to invest a lot in it. So it's not an easy process, right? So, um, but I think it's very beautiful that she. Uh, I, I just want to we add to her poem. I, ha- I also have a same poetry. Um, I want to say that I. This book, Don't Cry Phoenix, it's very feminine, so I want to embrace the femininity because I really wanted to use, you know, soft power in to tell the world that women can say, say it softly, but as powerful as men. So we don't have to use the same kind of uh, uh, diction, you know, that kind of, uh, the same kind of very rough language like it or, you know, there's a lot of uh, very violent language out there. But I, I really want to embrace their feminality. And so, uh, and also to react to your opening saying that female, we have more love and caring. So from this perspective, I wrote this poem on a desert, uh, on a desert island all along. My dearest, please wipe your tears have a piece of candy, and tell yourself, life is sweet. Even if you are on a desert island all along, you can still find reasons to live on. My dearest, please lean on the trunk of a frame tree. Behold the brightness of its flowers, and tell yourself, life is beautiful. Even if you are on, on a desert island all along, you can still make your life meaningful. My dearest, please love yourself because you are most worthy. Okay, thank you, Sonia. With that beautiful reading of your poem, uh, that is the uh, end of our discussion. Now it's the chance for q and A. I'm sure that you have questions, so uh, you can raise the questions either in English or Chinese. Both all right. Now, 下面进行一个这个。
呃，这个我们的问答环节啊，如果有问题的话，可以跟我们的几位作家呢，啊，我们可以再有机会啊，我们再交谈。呃，因为空间不大，所以我可能也就坐着向各位老师们提问了。I'll just、um, ask questions to our guests. I have two questions after hearing your sharing. The first is, like Manling said, you feel your words are neither masculine nor feminine. My question is, do you think? Um, there are any contents in your writings that are facilitated by your femininity? Another question is also inspired by Manling. You mentioned that female writers seem to be not that ambitious or aggressive. It reminds me of Simone de Beauvoir about the second gender. She said that's because、um, women can expect to be saved. Therefore, they don't actively create things of their own. I want to ask the works and status of women. Should they shoulder the responsibility that they should fight for women's rights instead of just telling、uh, um, their personal stories? Thank you for the question. Maybe we'll start with Su Manling. Very good questions. 然后，呃，首先，呃，我是挑一点点来。Oh, just want to respond to um a part of your question. Is it necessary? Oh, back to myself. Is there a, fe a feminine perspective in your writings? Yes, the perspective might be、um, feminine. But the words may be neutral. I think women tend to be more sensitive. We view humanity. We view men and women in a very detailed way. When we depict a character, I think that can be an advantage. You have to go beyond the surface to go deep. Of course, you can write things and post it on Instagram and Facebook, but if you are aiming for publishing, the standard is much higher. Of course, male writers can be really detail-oriented, like. A male gynecologist, gynecologist, they can be probably better than their female counterparts. The same is applicable in writing. I don't know if you agree with me on this. Thank you. Oh, um, so I think it's important to,、um, yeah, again, like to embrace your femininity. I think you you don't need to follow because I think in the university, you can know a lot of English and like、um, male writers, right? And we always try to follow them, but、uh, yeah, I don't. So I and and. And yes, so for me, I think、um, one of the reasons to write this memoir also because in 2009 I visited、uh, Hope Institute Children's Center in Uganda, 
and I helped uh, six girls to go to school. So I, I went there and visited them for the first time. And at first, they stay away from me, like uh, and and just uh, pay really good um, like respect and stay in a distance. But later, I went to their dormitory and I sit on the floor in a circle with them and I share my true story with them. So. Then immediately they opened up to me. Yeah, so I saw the beautiful light of, uh, of recognition in their eyes and also the superb uh, uh, storytelling, the power of uh, storytelling uh, right there and then. So I think it's very important to, um, you know, just it doesn't matter man, man or female, but I think if you write from your heart, um, I think, it, and, and you can touch. Um, people, I think that's most important. You have to have your authentic voice, right? You find your voice. So I, I just also want to add that. So like uh, writing a memoir like this is uh, involves involves a lot of uh, sweat and tears and fear, anxiety, doubt and exasperation, and yet something else emerges. Something stronger than all this is love. Yeah. So it was profoundly energizing and electrifying and uplifting to write a book like this. Um, yeah, so it's like, uh, uh, like um, it's empowering and it's lifting. But yes, you need to be ready to face your demons and, and, and be able to, to write about them deeply. And so The Girl Who Dreamed, my book, um, is a love letter from my heart. It is my love song to the marginalized people, the wounded souls, and everyone who cares. Yeah, so when, it, it doesn't really matter men or women, but I think if you, ha you, uh, you don't see yourself, yourself has become a character in your book, right? So you try to, uh, and, and also to, to let the role know how it feels to be you. So you share, you make yourself become, uh, so people can see through your eyes. So it's not about you, but it's through your eyes you in which others. So in that sense, I think it really doesn't matter man or woman, as long as it, it, yeah, you feel it and you really want it to share and to connect. Yeah. And that's, I think, most important. I agree with you about femininity. I don't think I consciously focused on this notion in my creation. I think our identity varies. For example, when I'm writing about a dealer, I'm not seeing this dealer from the perspective of a woman, but as a passerby or another worker in the casino. We are experiencing constant shifts and changes of roles and identities. I think that affects my writing. Well, what a fruitful discussion. We don't have time for other questions. But if you would like to communicate with our writers, you can stay behind and um, interact with them directly. I think they will have a few minutes for engage. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming.